Hello, and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea, and today I would like to share with you more of the information I received from the 25th dimension during my last hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of questions I've prepared in advance of the session, and I will be referring to Lorraine, who's my practitioner and is asking me the questions, and to me under hypnosis, which means that the answers are coming from the 25th dimension. So before I jump in, I want to thank you as always for subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video. I love hearing what everybody's at, what you guys think of this information that we receive. We're always comparing notes here, and I really, truly enjoy the community we've formed in the space. So please do let me know what's going on with you. All right, let's jump in. Lorraine, in relation to the side of the dark, is there a process that they have to help them transition out of this experience? And what does it entail? Me. So yes and no. Are they going through a transition? Yes, absolutely. What they might look at as a 3D transition, truthfully, is a consciousness transition because they already know what's coming next. So they're already transitioning as well. Their essence is pushing so that they start transitioning. We can't help it because again, our higher self wants this. The same thing is happening with us on the side of the light. Our higher self is doing the next thing that is focused on. And our higher self, our collective higher selves, for the ones that are still here, and we don't mean collective as one, we mean the collection of a higher selves that are still here at this point. We're already working on the next thing. We already know this is over, okay? So while we're wrapping up here, so focusing on some parts of 3D, we're really mostly focused on what's coming next and preparing, preparing for that. This is what we refer to when we say the transition period and becoming Neo. We're just preparing ourselves so we're not starting from scratch when we go to the next station. And the same thing is happening on the side of the dark. Now, of course, most of them are resisting this because most of them don't want to give up. They don't want to think we lost. They're still fighting. You can see they're fighting. There's still dark information popping up, right? They can't just let go. They're afraid for their lives. They're like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Am I going to have to kill myself? They're afraid. I mean, when you think of the things that they've done and the things that they're afraid we're going to discover, now they don't know that we don't want to know about the, but um, I can't say this word, uh, about the pedo and the rest of the world is failure. So they don't know that we don't want to know about this. We don't want to know about some of these things. They don't know that we are trying to smooth out things, which is exactly what we're doing. We're smoothing things out. We don't want disclosure. We don't want any of that. They don't know this. At a conscious level, this is the way they live. They're afraid of being discovered. When you do certain things, it's inevitable. Whether you think you have all the power in the world, <clears throat> you can get away with murder, like literally, you still think, oh, God forbid somebody should discover this. That's why they blackmail each other, because that's the thing that's foremost on their minds. It's, we don't want this to be known, right? So when you live like that, it's very hard to say, oh, now we're transitioning. There is no transition at a conscious level for any of these people. They can't even think of what that would look like. Unless, of course, they turn, they start helping, for example, the white hats, and they're like, okay, they're going to forgive me for all of this. Not forgive me, but they're going to let it go in exchange for something. So there are some people who are consciously saying, I better stop. I better stop doing this. I'm already seeing the writing on the wall, and this is a problem. Many people, even on the side of the dark, they don't know that there is a takedown. Many people don't know, unless they're getting this information from the 25th. And we don't mean just spoken words from Clea, who's bringing this through. We already said there are other people that are distributing this information. They're inputting this information in the energetic field. It doesn't necessarily need to be spoken. But these people don't know. And so they're just thinking, okay, what am I going to do in 20 years from now? What is going to happen to me? And so yes and no. Are they transitioning? Of course, we're all transitioning. We're already our higher selves already. They're done here. And we're finishing up some things that we didn't know we could do. So we're now focusing on certain things, whereas before our focus had already moved on. But it's nothing major. The rest is just automatic. It's just routine stuff that we do. We wake up in the morning, we have breakfast or whatever it is, it's all routine. Nothing is really changing. And whatever these people do, that's what they're doing. But at a subconscious level, at a higher self level, yes, they are transitioning. 
Some of them might be transitioning at a physical level. Again, we said they might actually know something is up, sense something is up, and therefore think, oh, this is no good. I better do something different. But most of them are still resisting. You see stuff comes up all the time. What is the thing that just popped up? was the law about bail, there being no bail for violent crimes, violent crimes in Chicago. It's gonna supposedly become effective in January, 2023. And now that's not gonna happen. It's going to be stopped, but this is what we're talking about. So some of them are continuing as usual because they just don't know what else to do. They're afraid that if they let go, there's gonna be repercussions like physical, bad repercussions for all of them. Lorraine. Thank you. Okay. We originally had 300 million NPCs out of the 2 billion humans on the planet. What is the point of having so many NPCs on this planet? Me. So we already said that the purpose of NPCs is for people to come in and experience a certain reality, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the reason specifically, because this is a large number of NPCs, but we also have a large population. We had a large population on this planet. So we already said this is unusual. Generally, planets don't have such large populations. What's happened is that over the last 300 years, after the takedown was announced, a lot of people wanted to come in, and therefore, there have been more bodies produced. Just as simple as that. Normally, we don't need to have such a large number of NPCs available. Now, as we were planning for more essences to come in, or we wanted the opportunity for more essences to come in, therefore, the bodies were prepared. But many essences have not been interested and we know that now, you know, basically nobody's interested in coming here anymore. But that was the case. That's the reason why we have as many as we did. It is a large number. It is an unusually large number of NPCs. Lorraine, and other than the NPCs that have essences that have left, do we have NPCs that were never essenced, meaning never had a committed essence? Do we still have a whole bunch of those left? Me. Yes, we do have a lot of them left. With the exception of the bodies that were taken by the second group of people going with aliens, which we already said it was about 500 million people, really most everybody else, except for the people that passed away through different causes, could be, you know, the same side effects, or, you know, the essence decided that once it was going to project somewhere, it was going to let the body die or whatever the case might be. But we already said the majority of those that have left the body behind wanted the body to continue for our sake so that we wouldn't be in a world that's deserted. So unless people, you know, decided to move on, many people have gone to the 25th dimension. So the things that have always been happening, then yeah, I mean, we're still mostly here. I mean, most of the bodies are still here. Again, outside of those people that we just referenced. So we still have a lot of original NPCs here just living their lives. Lorraine. I'm still very confused about this whole NPC concept, but we'll leave it for now and I'll ask you later. Okay. Clay and I did a muscle testing session where we discovered that it's only the 12,000 who want to stay here to see the recall of, the, of this thing because it's serving a higher purpose while everyone else on the team of the light who's still here is staying because we agreed to go to New York together. So they're waiting for the 12,000. What is the higher purpose the 12,000 are staying here for? And what is the lesson that they're learning at this time, which will supposedly affect the entire multiverse and be beneficial to everyone, including the SSS that are staying behind because of 12,000. And before I read the answer here, she's referring to a muscle testing session we did that I um, published before this new session. If knows the session started, it's called Muscle Testing with the 25th Dimension. You can look back a few videos and you'll find it if you haven't watched it. I thought it was very powerful and I will also link it in the box below so you can find it easily in case you're looking to see exactly what transpired during the session. All right, so here's the answer. So what the 12,000 are learning, we've discussed before how the 12,000 tried everything really that they knew how to do to rebalance the polarity on this planet. And eventually, they came up with the idea of the reset. And then this idea was co-opted by the other side. And all of a sudden, the 12,000 really the light workers gave up and said, OK, well, this is what it is. We're just going to take this now. What the 12,000 are learning now, even more so than other people who already discussed this just previously in the session, is that we can, even at a conscious level, we can, while still being in the game, we're not upsetting anything. We can rebalance reality by our focused intent. 
what happens is when we come here, we do want to be part of the game. We do want to live within the guidelines of the game. We don't want to mess the game up. We do want to believe, for example, again, in separation, that we are limited beings, that we have no power or things are happening because of outside forces. You know, the sun energy, <laughs> they were laughing here. <laughs> uh, the moon energy, the person on the corner doing this and therefore I'm affected, whatever excuse we have for what happens in our life. And we thought that in order to be in the game, we had to go along with that. Whereas now we realize you're not breaking the game by imposing your will. I want to repeat this, it is so powerful. We now realize you're not breaking the game by imposing your will. I love it. What we wanted, we explained this, we wanted not to upset the game really at a very basic level. And we supported a lot of these negative low vibration ideas. Again, negative as in slow energy ideas, low energy ideas. We never thought, you know what? Despite all of this, we can do all of that, which is what we are doing now. So we're talking about the fact that everybody is learning that we can change reality. The 12,000 are especially learning this lesson. And what is this gonna do? Why is this absolutely worthwhile? It's because we know that if we apply this idea, we will never have to take any more planets down because the truth is we can be in the game while still remembering that we can change our reality. This is something We've talked about before the fact that many of us, all of us who tried the game of awakening, because again, it's a choice, it's a game, it's just a way of playing the game. Some of us choose to awaken, some choose to never awaken because they want to be fully within the matrix, whether it's on this planet or other planets. We chose to awaken, but we chose to awaken because once we have tried this game of awakening in each embodiment, we love it and we want to do it. So in every embodiment, we go in with amnesia and then eventually we'll awaken. We always set ourselves up for this outcome within each lifetime because it's fun for us. Even more so, this is going to happen for the 12,000. Already, we're experiencing this, but now we're at the point where we're like, we don't even have to be so full in the game at any point. We can always, at all times, at a conscious level, remember we can change things. We can actively change certain things without upsetting the game, without breaking the game. And again, why is this so paramount? It's because we believe that once this is in place, we are never going to have to take down another planet. We'll be able to go in and basically we're learning a new tool we didn't know was available where we don't have to worry about having to take down another planet. Now, things could always happen we know this, but at this point we feel very confident that, wow, this is how we could have played this. And we are never gonna let ourselves get to that point where we feel discouraged because really how easy is it now? I know it might not feel easy from a 3D perspective, but how easy is it now to see all these things? Boom, 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 boom. They're all coming. This is not happening by chance because it had to happen. If you step back two years to the beginning of this pandemic, who knew that we would be able to have countries, governments, the most corrupt entities in the world, governments and corporations say, we're not gonna do this evil thing anymore. Who knew? For those of us who are older than 20 and they were laughing, we have already become jaded enough in this reality where we would never, all we have witnessed our entire life is worse, 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 worse. All they do is come out with new laws. Claire is always wishing that they would take a few years off. Say you become a politician, listen, we'll pay you to stay home. Never, ever pass any laws. <laughs> That's the best use of a politician, to not pass any laws. So you're not going to make things worse because she's never seen a law that was good. They always make things worse, worse and worse and worse. Who would have thought, especially when they did warp speed to create these things, and we've seen what we have seen, who would have thought when you think about it without basing yourself on what you know now, go back and think, oh, we're going to see this recall. This is how badly this entire plan, this entire scam is going to pan out. That not only is not going to work out the way they want it to, we're actually going to expose these things. No one would have bet on this. If you were a betting person, you would have never bet on this outcome. And look at this, it's happening. What are the chances of that? This is us. This is all us. And this is not lost on anybody. And definitely the 12,000 want this, want to see this. 
is changing the way that we will manage things in the future when we go into a certain reality. We have basically learned that we don't have to stop and throw up our hands and be like, oh, there's nothing more we can do. That there is actually, we can do all of this. We can do it proactively and we're never going to have to deal with any negative polarity even close to what we dealt with here. This is changing the game for the entire multiverse. And we've explained this. We actually said this during the muscle testing session that this is going to change everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.